Hello everyone, my name is Greg and I dev stuff. Welcome everyone to episode 12 of the Tactics Game in Unity. Refactoring mouse controls. Today we will refactor our mouse control to remove the repeated code about mouse control, which will allow us to create nice interface between player and gameplay. Create a new object called Game Manager, set position to zero. We want to decouple the mouse input from systems we already have implemented, like move character, character attack, etc. etc. Instead, we will create script called mouse input, which will manage all of the mouse input. It will centralize all the interaction with the mouse in one place, and everyone who needs a mouse input data will reference the script. Inside we need to make a field for the camera we will be using. So in case you will be having multiple cameras on the scene, you will be able to specify which camera to use for your control scheme. Set the camera in the editor. While we here, let's turn off all the components on the camera. We need to add target grid and terrain layer mask, so we will be able to interact with the grid and specify a physical layer where this grid is placed. Set them in the editor. Now in the update, shoot the ray out of the mouse position on the screen from the main camera. Then cast the ray cast. Good, so now let's introduce a public variable called position on grid, which will store the position our mouse is currently over. We hit the terrain with this raycast, convert the hit point into the grid position. Then Then compare the hover over position to the grid position in the update. If it's not equals, that means our mouse moved and changed the position and we need to update position on grid. This episode is brought to you by generous support of people on Patreon and members on YouTube. If you want to join them, link to my Patreon in the description and join button available right now on YouTube. With this mouse input script, we have decoupled mouse. And from now on, if you need to read position of the mouse, just read it of the mouse input script. We will migrate the move character attacking script in the next episodes, when we will start introducing command patterns. Now let's introduce a marker on the map to make it more clear where our player is pointing at with his mouse, and this will allow us to demonstrate how mouse input works in this episode. Create another new script called marker, open the script, 
and here we need to create a reference to the transform of our marker object. Create a marker object. Reference marker object in the marker script. Cache the mouse input so we will be able to read the mouse input in the marker. Create current position variable and target grid serialized variables. To update marker position only every time your mouse changes the position on the grid, compare the current position. In case they are not equal, it means the mouse moved on the grid, and we need to update our marker position. By getting the world position on the node from the target grid. Set the target grid and let's test this. It works, but our marker is too small and hits underground. So we need to introduce an elevation. Add elevation to Y position. Now when our mouse input is not hovering over the ground, we want to hide our marker. 
in the mouse input if we hit something, let's set public bool variable called active to true, otherwise in else set it to false. That means if our raycast doesn't collide with the ground, it means it's hovering over something else, like outside of the boundaries, for example. And we should not try to show the marker when we are not hitting our terrain. In the marker, create a new variable called active, which will store the state of our marker. Is it active on the scene or not? In case our mouse input is not active, we want to disable our marker. And if it is active, then we want to enable our marker to show it to our player. If our marker is inactive, we don't need to update the marker position, so add exit gate here and make sure you move the active check above the exit gate. Look, it works. but occasionally it throws an error. This is happening because we are trying to get the position outside the boundaries. So add an exit gate based on the check boundary. Good, this is it for this episode. If you have any questions or any ideas about code, please leave your comment below. If you are interested in seeing what will come out of this, please subscribe. If you want to support further, you can find my Patreon in the description. Special thank you to Andrew Willong and the Salt Hashdu for their generous support. With best regards, see you in the next episode.